Hey everyone, welcome to the Token Nerd Podcast, where we ramble on about geeky things ranging from Batman to pop figures to Star Wars. I'm Travis Likens. And I'm Addison Pettiford. And we're here with episode 12. Uh, today, we're going to talk with the casual movie fan. Uh, our normal co-host of Anthony Pettiford could not be with us, so you get him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a replacement. So um, uh, we'll just kind of jump right into things here today with, first off, we want to shout out, you know, an RIP to um, someone that's near and dear to all Star Wars fans out there. Um, over the weekend, uh, we got the news that Eric Bowersfield, uh, I believe that's how you say his last name, um, passed away. Um, for those that do not know, this uh, young 93-year-old person was the voice of the famous Admiral Akbar. Um, you know, he actually, you know, did the, um, the voices in the Return of the Jedi film. And also the, um, you know, uh, came back to do the, the voice in the force awakens. Mm -hmm. And of course the famous, it's a trap will always be in, you know, fans hearts. Oh yeah. Um, you know, throughout the, um, you know, throughout the, the time and history of life. Um, in addition to his work with, uh, star Wars, he actually, um, uh, produced many radio dramas at Berkeley's KPFA radio station. That was uh, 31 years of work he did there. So oh, wow. you know, he's probably got a ton of fans there as well. And um, according to the Hollywood reporter, he, he died in his home on Sunday and confirmed, and that was confirmed by his manager. So, um, you know, shout out to this family, you know, fans across the world, I'm sure are with you and uh, wishing, you know, giving you good, good wishes your way. So, yeah. Um, in a lighter note, uh, <laughs> we can move on to the the first news that we have for movies this week. Um, it's been, uh, you know, after Batman versus Superman. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. fans are just itching. We're just itching to know about what happens next. And uh, one of the big movies that's coming up in the next year um, is Wonder Woman. Yes, yes. So, you know, Wonder Woman um, was planned to be released on um, June 23rd, 2017. Well, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers has announced that that is changing. But unlike Gambit, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually coming sooner. Uh, so um, the the film is actually being moved to June 2nd. So um, like 21 days 20, earlier. Yes, 21 days earlier. So it'll be June 2nd of 2017. And um, with the film, they're, they're moving it up. And it appears it's due to the fact that Transformers 5, which oh. who is going to go see that, and uh, Bad Boys 3 were supposed to release on the same day as the Wonder Woman film. So it was a smart move for the, you know, the uh, studio to move that up to the uh you know a few a few weeks just to get a especially since wonder woman was one of the you know positives coming out of yeah and i batman think v it, superman. i really think a lot of fans are excited about it. everybody that i've heard talking about batman versus superman you know they're talking about wonder woman and what that film is going to be and i mean personally coming out of that movie uh, my feelings if you listen to our uh token nerd review of Batman versus Superman was that uh, Wonder Woman and the Batman, um, whatever's going on with Batman, those are the most exciting things to me in this film. So hopefully, you know, fans, it translates into sales uh, for this Wonder Woman film when it hits the theaters, because it was kind of one of those properties that I'm not sure a lot of people were, um, I don't want to say that people weren't excited for it. It's just people didn't really have a, an opinion about it because yeah. Wonder Woman's one of those characters that, you know, everybody knows she's exists, exists, but I'm not sure how many people were reading the titles. Right. Specifically in the modern times. And yeah. I can't, is, is there a title that's current? I mean, other than the graphic novels? That um, right. Uh, there is a single title coming from the new 52 with Wonder Woman. Okay. Kind of following more of the uh, Greek mythology. Okay about it um aspect of it it's actually really good i actually really enjoy yeah enjoy the uh the title yeah so it's a i think it's a smart move anytime a studio can try to get um as many uh, get a day for a release that doesn't have very many other big titles hitting at the same time it's a you know it's a great way for the film to hopefully generate more sales for the studio and hopefully create more profit for um you know these studios and these franchises so I think good move. What do you think? Oh, I think it's a great move. Okay. Um, but also, just a real quick, DC just announced that they have two open slots now for October fifth, two thousand eighteen, and November for uh, November first, two thousand nineteen. 
So that's where they're going to insert the reboot of Batman. More or less, yeah. I think <laughs> I think I think that's where they um, cuz when they first announced that slate like a few I think like last year or maybe a year and a half ago, um, there was no Batman or Superman on that list. It was, you know, uh, Green Lantern, Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Justice League, whatever. And I th- there's a caption underneath saying Batman and Superman are not uh they haven't found a time yet. It's not like they weren't yeah, on they, the they slate. They didn't know when they were going to. Yeah, so yeah. I'm assuming right now that those two dates yeah. will probably be, would be for uh, Superman and Batman. Yeah, it's because similar to what uh, Mar- or Sony Marvel has done with the, the future Deadpool movies. Yeah. Just insert Deadpool movie. Like mm-hmm. They don't know what it's going to be or when it's going to be. Especially but. since they took out Gambit, which yep. honestly... Smart move. Yeah. Smart move. That I think, I, and I heard, uh, you know, I heard a good conversation about that, uh, the Deadpool movie, and we're kind of moving into another movie, movie <laughs> news thing here, is that um, with the Gambit movie, I guess it had a two hundred million dollar budget. Yeah, it was, it was like really expensive, and I had not realized that prior to you know all of our conversations about the about this Gambit movie, and um, I think I. I believe that what's happened is is that they got a hit out of deadpool for 50 some million bucks Mm -hmm. now that doesn't include marketing or anything like that but it made made them um or fox fox marvel sorry i said sony marvel earlier um but out of fox marvel they came and said you know what do we really need a 200 dollars gambit or 200 million dollar gambit movie in order to get a hit we did it with 50 million dollars for deadpool I, i think they also realized do we really need a gambit movie well and on top of that deadpool has a you know a humongous following yeah that how many times do you you don't see a lot of gambit cosplay at, at conventions that well, I go to. Well, the thing about Gambit is that he works within the X Men. Yeah, and that and that's the interesting thing when you think about like, oh, they did a Wolverine movie. Yeah. Well, Wolverine but, wasn't part of the X Men when he was first created, and neither was Deadpool. Uh, yeah. So these characters were already on their own. And Wolverine has a huge following. Yeah, yeah. So, but my thing is there there are there was a decent Gambit title not that long ago. You know, as, as far as Marvel is concerned, where he was on his own. Yeah. Um. But I so I, I'm not saying that I don't think it can be done because. Earlier, I would have said, yes, I'm excited for this movie. I like the idea of um, seeing Channing Tatum taking on a different role. Mm-hmm. I just, I, it's just a weird, it, it's a weird movie that I, I think, yes, comic book fans would be like, okay, maybe I'll go support this if it looks okay from the trailers. But your average Joe may not know who Gambit is. So it was a harder sell to the, the populace outside of, basic comic book fans and, and i think fans would be more excited to see him in x-men instead yeah. of on his own yeah. because I, you know when you would see him interact with like rogue or something yeah. like that that's where gambit really shines yeah. and even though he did have a title mm, i mean yeah. squirrel girl also had a title and that doesn't mean we're gonna see yeah. a movie of her anytime yeah. soon i think the um my thing with the the whole gambit thing is that i think it would have worked out better if in their movie universe right now they had a current timeline for x-men yeah so right now we have a um you know back in time 80s i 80s. think we're in the 80s yeah, now. it should be like 80s early 90s look yeah for the x-men um i think in it would have made more sense had they introduced a current timeline gambit in a x-men movie then spun him out of there well, they I, well they said that he was supposed to be in Apocalypse, but yeah. then it wouldn't make sense yeah. for the rest of the movie. Yeah. So that that was kind of my my thought with that is that it's kind of hard to spin him off and put him on his own movie when yeah. he's not been involved in a lot of stuff. Was he was an X two or three right? No, he was in X Men Origins. Origins played that's by right. uh, Taylor Kitsch, which yeah. I actually really liked him as Gambit, and I would have liked to see him come back. Yeah. So I I don't know what's going on with that movie. And, um, but my, my personal opinion is, is that I, I am still in the camp of, I would be interested to see it. I don't know that it's worth $200 million to make it. Absolutely not. Um, I don't know that they would net a return of two <laughs> of $200 million yeah. you know, by the time they've marketed it and everything that the money would be there. Cause I mean, even with Batman versus Superman pulling in all this money with as much money as they spent to, to market it. And to see that insane drop off that they've had in the past, you know, the second week sales. Yeah. I mean, a lot of movies have that, but 
you, you got a question like, hey, we marketed and spent all this money, but word of mouth is just killing that movie. Mm-hmm. And I guess we could just segue into that for a second as well. Like, what was your thought when you saw the, the what was it, 60% or 70% yeah. drop in sales in the second it's, week? It's always interesting because, you know, when you follow box office, you know, any kind of box office, it's always funny. I mean, they say like, oh, Batman v Superman only made $50 million. And then you see some like some poor indie movie that just barely made like 30, yeah. uh, 30 million. It's like, and that's their, that's the biggest budget they ever get. Yeah. But then um, for Batman v Superman, it's yeah. The word of mouth is really just, it's just destroying it's that. Kicking I mean, right and now. we, and we, we kind of pro- projected that we asked the question, what do you think the sales are going to be in the second week? Yeah. And our, po- I believe it was in the podcast or it was in the <laughs> review. I cannot remember, but we, we anticipated that we would see a drop off, but I feel like that number was even worse than we thought it would be. Yeah. Um, Cause I looked at it and I was like, Holy crap. I mean, this is like, this is the flagship of, of the DC universe. Like this is the movie that is supposed to basically, you know, kickstart, everything. kickstart this entire thing. And to see sale drops like that, I don't, I mean, we Marvel movies have dropped in the past, mm-hmm. but not that hard, right? Well, really? the problem with it is that even though I don't think it's as doom and gloom as everyone thinks it is, it is, pretty gloomy it's alarming yeah because they've got what six movies at least planned to follow this so it doesn't unfortunately batman v superman because it's not as fluffy as some a lot of the marvel movies are there's not a whole lot of repeat value unless you're you know you're really really into it and you want to see things because i've i've only seen it once i think the so and, and this is my own assessment of movie going but I think the reason you see movies like the Marvel movies pulling money and keep pulling in money and the and Star Wars Force Awakens just continue to pull in money is that it was fun to go see those movies. Yeah, it, they're they're fun movies. Batman versus Superman wasn't fun. It just was not fun. Yeah. And so I mean I enjoyed myself and I had I had fun watching uh you know Batman do his thing, but you know you also have it's also over two and a half hours, so you yeah. know that's yeah, I mean, it two was two and a half hours of your life. It, it was fun in its own way, but it's not fun in the way of man. When I left the movie, I felt upbeat, like man, yeah, that was so exciting. I can't wait to go see it again. <laughs> like, yeah, but I think that I still the positive that came out. I said this in, my, in our review is that people are now excited to see where this yeah. universe goes, especially with the side characters, yeah. and especially something that's not directed by yeah. Zack Snyder. Yeah, so. <sighs> We'll see what happens there, but I I just thought that was an interesting. Uh, oh yeah, talking I point. mean that's a it's a huge drop from like it's uh it made like what four hundred million worldwide, yeah. or in two hundred million uh domestic, and then dropped to yeah fifty uh, fifty million. Yeah, because I mean with marketing on that movie, they had to spend. Oh, like, they said it's one of their most expensive movies. Yeah, that's yeah. why uh, Warner Brothers also kind of put out a whole like, um, I think Warner Brothers said that they're they're going to only really focus on their main brand uh main brand properties right now so like we're going to see a lot more of the uh dc movies and the uh the new harry potter uh fantastic beast and where to find them because they know hey we'll at least get money back so apparently whatever happened at warner brothers with the making of batman v superman it hurt them bad Yeah, because i mean they i just think it's they were expecting in my opinion a star wars situation where it just like pulls in money and pulls in money. Maybe not to the tune that Star Wars did, yeah. but it had some legs. Mm-hmm. And based on those numbers, the legs just got chopped off at the knees. I yeah. mean, like, and maybe even at the thigh. Like it, it, it was way up there. Now, if it stays at 50 million for the next couple of weeks, then it's good. But if it drops again, if it drops the way again, it did. Yeah. It, I mean, it, with, with word of mouth, I mean, I think, I think a lot of people had the same opinion I did. I wasn't telling people not to go see it. I was telling people, hey, yeah, you need to form your own opinion. But and I, think, I, was, I was like, but you might want to go to the matinee. And I think <laughs> that's what, I, what ended up happening is that people saw it once. They're like, okay, I got my opinion. And they kind of called it. And they called it a day. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, we've kind of beat this dead horse. So I guess we should probably continue on with the news. But you know, let's see what happens. I mean, I, I think it'll be interesting to see out of DC what, what the future holds and will they continue with this dark tone? That's not fun. Well, they already said that justice league is going to be a lot more, is going to be lighter than yeah. Batman V Superman. And they also said Aquaman's going to be a lot more fun, which I'm, yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited for Aquaman. Okay. So, um, the next item that's, we have listed here for the movie news is, um, Sony, has uh, kind of uh, 
went on the internet and decided to buy some uh, domain names here. Yep. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, in their attempt to uh, not get hacked, I guess, or, you know, whatever Sony's issues have been in the past. With they're the, just going to put it all out there. They're just going to put it all out there. And they uh, went out and they have registered three potential movie titles for the new Spider-Man movie. Um, I guess technically it is the fourth potential title because we had Spider-Man Homecoming, which was the title that everybody kind of was expecting based on the, no? <laughs> no. No one was expecting? I, I, was, I was not expecting Spider-Man Homecoming. <laughs> so uh, they, they kind of had that move, that one being tossed around for a little while. And now we have, um, first up, Spider-Man Coming of Age Movie.com. Um, <sighs> Spider-Man Greatness Awaits Movie.com uh, and Spider-Man Suspended Movie.com. So ugh. all of those movie titles kind of suck. Suck. They, they Homecoming's suck. the best out of all of them. I mean, yeah. It's the it's the best out of um, out of the and, worst situation. And, but it, it, Homecoming, I think, kind of alludes to the fact that, you know. Marvel it, Studios kind of has yeah, like a... It's coming back. You're coming back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a homecoming celebration. It also ties in this Spider-Man, I believe, based on what I've read, is a younger Spider-Man, right? Yeah. But so but caught high school, like going to the homecoming dance maybe? You know? yeah, but I no, know. I, I don't want to see Spider-Man, <laughs> the final battle be at homecoming. I mean, it can be, but I don't want that to be the name of the title. Um, but um, as far as we can tell, the, the other... You know, Homecoming, the other piece of this that ties in is that um, it actually is tied to a Spider-Man comic mm-hmm. um, involving Captain America and Iron Man. And uh, it's been alluded to that, you know, Chris Evans and Robin Downey Jr. would possibly be involved in the Spider-Man movie. So uh, it's just like another reminder of, hey, this. <laughs> hey, we're we're in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, it's not it's not just the fact that Spider-Man was in Civil War. It's yeah. now everyone's crossing into his movies. Yeah. You know what I think would be a more interesting story than all of this? And this will not happen mm. uh, because I don't think they'll end up doing the, anything like this. But. What if they cr- uh, crossed over Kingpin it, out of the uh, out of the Daredevil series into Ooh. into Spider Man? Because I mean, technically, they you know they are in comics together regularly. Yeah, yeah. So that's a possibility, but it probably won't happen because no. that's what I want to happen. So. Honestly, I think it's because <laughs> that uh, Daredevil is way way violent compared to uh, you know. Yeah, but King Kingpin doesn't have to be. Um, I mean, he doesn't have to be like fighting people in the movie. Like he could be just kind of like gathering other villains together. Like he's yeah. done that in the past as well to kind of, you know, lead lead the gang or whatever. I st- I think they're going to try cameo gonna, something. Nah. Like, can I get something? <laughs> I, I think they're going to try to keep Kingpin solely to uh to the Netflix yeah. series and of course uh, Daredevil. Yeah. I kind of see this as a um with the you know the Spider Man coming back into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I kind of see this as a win win for everybody type situation where like you know Marvel's eating a lot, you know they're yeah, doing yeah. they're doing good, right? But yeah. we got some characters that are hanging out on the wings here. That if you guys come and play nice and we get to use the characters, you know, we all eat good because yeah. you know with Spider Man they struggled there. Sony kind of had their their hits and misses there. I think a better like a, just a better middle finger to Sony. Is if they call it the superior Spider Man. That would be I good. think I, I think if you really wanted to prove like I think hey, they, Marvel Marvel is taking care of Spider Man, call it superior. Yeah. Even though it wouldn't be the same because it, you know, it wouldn't match the title, but I think that would be a very interesting route for Spider Man to take. Yeah. Would be um, you know, to have Peter Parker die. And then have Doc Ock take Doc, over Doc his Ock mind. Take over. I enjoyed that title up through about title, probably about like issue 15 to 20, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it started taking a very strange turn. But the first, you know, the the first part of that book, that series, I loved. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be an interesting, um, you know. I just, like the, I just like the idea of just like, yeah, you had your amazing Spider-Man, but we have the <laughs> superior. superior Spider-Man. Well, unfortunately, Sony has not registered Superior Spider-Man movie yet. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is all we have to work off of. But, um, you know, and along the lines of rumor mills and all that kind of stuff, you know, obviously registering these domain names do not actually mean these are tied to these movies at all. We understand there are also um, potential animated movies that they could be registering these titles, these uh, domain names for as well. Which is so weird because they already have a like a successful don't, animated TV show. Yeah, they have the TV series. So but I don't know why they would you go would, for You would think they movie. would, if they were going to make an animated movie, it would somehow be tied to that series. But um, from 
I don't believe based on these titles, I don't believe that those are tied to, isn't it the um, ultimate Spider-Man right now? Yeah. 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 So it, based on these titles, I don't think it's tied to that either, but, but then when you, I, I just looked it up because I remember that they said that the Spider-Man movie is going to be like a John Hughes movie. And if you don't know John Hughes, he did the uh, breakfast club, pretty pink, all those movies. The homecoming kind of makes more sense now. If it's going to be in the, in the idea of a John Hughes movie, yeah, homecoming and if it being at a homecoming dance makes sense yep but i don't i, I still don't like it <laughs> i still don't like it at all so uh moving on to the last bit of movie news that we have outlined for today uh, it's been announced that dr strange will be getting a new trailer debut on april 12th on jimmy kimmel's uh jimmy kimmel live on abc um Benedict Cumberbatch. Back. Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, you got that. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, debut the trailer himself on an episode on the episode, and um, it'll be a part of Marvel Studios themed week um, on the late shows. So, looks like the trailer uh, will be advertised in the movie, which will be released on November fourth. And in other Doctor Strange news, have you seen the costume? Yes. It looks and sweet, doesn't it? I, I, <laughs> I'm so excited for Doctor Strange because at first I was like, eh, Doctor Strange, yeah. he's interesting. You know, it's magic. Yeah. I like magic. But then when you see him in the costume and you see him walking with uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor as Baron Mordor walking down New York, yep. you're just like, I can't, I, I, I can't wait. And then, unfortunately, it got kind of ruined because they were doing some uh, action scene and they were getting a shot of them jumping. Yep. So you kind of... so. Movie magic is going to make it look a lot more, you know, epic. But in real life, you just saw them kind of galloping and then do a little, whoop, a little <laughs> leap. And now people have memed that into the uh, opening or the fight scene in uh, Avengers, uh, not uh, not Avengers, Captain America Civil War, when they all, you know, trust yeah. each other. So you see Cap's team running and then you just see Doctor Strange just leap, whoop, <laughs> do a little leap. But yeah, the costume looks great. Yeah. Um, the cast is amazing. Yeah. Did you see a... Uh, uh, Cumberbatch going into a comic book store as yes, just I did, as I did see that. Yeah. The, kid, the kid was like, oh, can I get your photo? <laughs> yeah, he like held up a comic to yeah. him. He's like, he went, if you guys don't know, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, he went into a comic book store in uh, New York because I think that's where they're filming it. Yep. Full costume with a whole the whole crew behind him. He just walked in all casual, just like, do you have any Doctor Strange comics? And he's just like, you're, <laughs> you're Doctor Strange. So, yeah, I, I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah, um, I think uh, Doctor Strange for me is a similar situation to Ant Man. While I knew who he was and I knew some of the mythology around him, I never really read the titles or anything like that. Um, so, if the movie is, you know, as exciting as uh, Ant Man was throughout, I'm in. Like, yeah. I, I just want it to be a good movie and fun. You know, like, that's my kind of thing. And that's the power of Marvel Studios right now. Like, yep. they could put up, like, hey, we're doing a squirrel girl. And you're like, you haven't really led me wrong yet. Yeah. So why not? Let's well, I mean, just guardians of the galaxy was the first one for me that I was kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I know these characters, but I don't know if this is going to work as a movie. And they I, totally proved me wrong. <laughs> like, I honestly, was like, I, I kind of, I had a feeling it was going to work out because yeah. you well, know, when people talk about, it, they always say, Oh, it's just a talking raccoon in a tree. And it's like, well, there's also a, uh, Star Lord, who's pretty yeah. much like Indiana Jones in yeah, and space, and Star Lord um, in that movie, played by Chris Pratt. Obviously, he just kind of stole the show. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, people just super love charming. that character. You know, like, <laughs> and um, I just uh, again, they haven't they haven't got us wrong. They haven't to- they haven't took us down the road yet, where you're like, dude, I don't well, know. Iron Man two, kind of. Well, yeah, yeah. but that everybody, was a, everybody forgot about that. They're they're in the beginning of their. Story. I, I mean, so cool. I'm not the biggest fan of the Thor ones, like myself. But I. Th- Honestly, I feel like Thor was more of just the Thor movies. I like them, yeah. Especially the first one. I thought the first one was really yeah. The first uh, one really, was better than the second one. I thought the second one kind of felt like he, felt like the hey, we're trying to make sure Thor is still relevant. Yeah. But then also introducing one of the Infinity Stones. Well, I think also with Thor is that I just never really cared about him. Like he was not a character that I was like, I'm, I'm in. Like I, I think the type font for all, most of the comics just kind of annoyed me, so I never <laughs> wanted to read the comics. Like it's because it's in like that Asgardian like yeah, you know, very font. V- yeah, very like, like old yeah, old like timing. a weird font. And I just like it kind of hurt my eyes, and I just never wanted to read it. So well, well, it's also interesting because he's not the Thor that's in the comics, who's very yeah Shakespearean, who's very yeah. expressive. But this this one's kind of like calm down a yeah. little, which well, I the weird I thing, like the weird thing with Thor, like you know. And he, like a Thor action figure doesn't act, it doesn't interest me at all. Like it's just one of those things. I'm like, 
Really? And, yeah. Like for whatever reason, Thor is just not my guy. And you know, everybody's got their own thing. Like everybody probably hates on me because I like Hulk. Because they're like, what it's Hulk? Like <laughs> Hulk's Hulk. awesome. Like, but he doesn't. He doesn't. His character never grows. Like, yeah, it does. Read more of the comics. Yeah, read. <laughs> he eventually learns to talk. Yeah, read. Uh, <laughs> Uh, War, World War Hulk. That yeah. that has a whole Planet Hulk too. Yeah, those those two issues have. Oh my gosh, yeah. so amazing. And um, I I mean I keep up with the the Hulk titles that are going on now. Like even the totally awesome Hulk, which is the new one that's out right now. <laughs> I mean, and it's not, I haven't I haven't even given it the time of day. Yeah, I mean, like I just always check them out just because it's like I love Hulk. Um, I love adding to that mythology, but it's a it's another character. You know, I forget what his name is because I didn't pay attention that closely. But he plays. He's the new Hulk, basically. Like, Wait, he's, it's Mark- not Bruce Banner. It's uh, Adam or something like that. Um, we'll we'll check that. Oh. <laughs> but it's, it's he's got another name, and he basically is taking on the mantle of, of Hulk. Of Hulk, and it, it's obviously um, my opinion on it is it's probably geared towards um, people that are watching. Agents of Smash, isn't that the current show? Like, so little kids that are is watching it, that. I don't know if it, is it still going on. Uh, I'm not sure if it is or not. Yeah, but I don't. I, I don't remember. I suspect that they're probably um, attempting to, um, you know, um, you know, build off of that and kind of get kids interested in in Hulk. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, really just trying to continue that world that they've not continue the world they've built, but to um, you know kind of just keep kids interested in the character is kind of what i see there and yeah I, i'm not sure what his name is but <laughs> yeah yeah it was well worth uh, it was worth looking there so um you know that kind of wraps up movie news for this week so i guess we'll go ahead and move into uh tv news and uh i will start off by reading the title of what the first tv news is and then i'm gonna let you lead it off because i'm behind on the mr arrow here so uh, the title we have is arrow just got terrific Yes, yeah, so <laughs> if you guys aren't following the show, um, earlier in this season they introduced uh, Cur- uh, Curtis Holt. Curtis Holt, yes. And if you don't know, Curtis Holt is Mister Terrific in the comics. So, and he's actually he's been playing as a Felicity's assistant at a uh, Palmer Tech, and you know he kind of helps her out every now and then if she needs some new tech. When she got paralyzed, he developed the new this new chip uh, that helped her walk again that she implanted in her spine. And it's convenient. Yeah, very convenient. <laughs> so, um, in the uh, here's some spoilers. Uh, Felicity and Oliver end up breaking up, and when they break up, she also leaves the team, so she's no longer Overwatch, aka Oracle. So, um, so I guess uh, in this episode that's airing today, they bring uh, Curtis on as the new, as the new character, yeah, as the new uh, Overwatch, I guess. And they said now he is going to have a more uh, important role yeah. in the next season. So is she leaving the show for good, good, or is it just like a yeah you know, for a little bit type thing? I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm sure when she walks away and is not getting that check, she'll be like, "Hey, can Overwatch come back?" <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if she's gonna leave. Maybe she'll go to Flash, which which I think she oh she work. probably could. Yeah, because yeah, I think her uh, Felicity's uh, chemistry with Barry is way better than her and Oliver. So yeah. if that's where she goes. Hopefully she goes to yeah. like Flash, or maybe she'll go to Legends tomorrow. <laughs> or they she'll might. work in she'll work in the uh, work in the what's that ship called? <laughs> I, I don't remember, yeah. but who knows? Maybe they could even spin her off into um, Birds her of Prey. Show. She can have her own show, Birds of Prey. Yeah. Get her uh, hunt. Maybe they could bring Huntress back. Yep. But uh, yeah, so he's he's gonna play a bigger role in the next season, which I'm kind of excited for. Aka Hope- Mister Terrific, by the way. Yeah, he uh, he. Uh, <laughs> what I say. Well, just it's his name is yeah. Curtis Holt, but yeah, he's going to be you know taking on the bigger roles, Mister Terrific. Yeah, so, so hopefully he does get the name in the next season, yep. and he gets the uh, the like the red mask or the red yep. paint on his face. So yep. yeah, hopefully that works out. So uh, continuing on in the Arrowverse or whatever you want to call it, the male a male verse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, we have that Arrow's Katie Cassidy will be appearing in the Flash episode twenty two of uh, this season. And um, it looks like she's going to be playing a character from Earth 2 named Black Siren. Um, in the comics, uh, Black Siren and uh, was the Golden Age version of Black Canary. And um, her name was Dyra Drake, right? Yes. So um, looks like she's going to be playing her doppelganger, correct? Is that kind of what yeah, you that, um, so, uh Yeah, Earth 2 pretty much has all these different doppelgangers yep. of the people from the prime Earth and... 
yeah, so I guess now she's going to come over and uh, like uh, play Black Siren. And if you uh, watch the old Justice League TV show, she actually appeared in um, uh, Justice League Legends, I think, yeah. where she was the, part the of the cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah. part of the uh, Justice League. No, the Justice Guild of America, which okay. was kind of like it was just a bunch of kind of like weird knockoffs of the original Golden Age characters. So, um, you know, it'll be fun to see her play another character, uh, even if it is herself. But the big question is, will she be fin- friend or foe? That's uh, that's the big thing, because now most of the time when someone comes from Earth 2, other than uh, yeah. uh, Jay Garrick, they've been villains. Yeah, they've been villains, or it's been like a totally different person. Yeah. So, like, you go to talk to them, and they, they're not a nice person or whatever. Not <laughs> at all. So, so, I mean, so I think she's going to be a good guy, because that's, I mean, Black Siren is a is a hero in the in the comics or i don't know if it isn't i don't think black siren is actually in the comics i think she was just introduced in uh was introduced in that cartoon yeah. i don't know not 100 percent sure yeah. i mean there's so many comics she could have been there at some point yeah, yeah but uh <laughs> so i think she's gonna i think she's gonna be a good guy it'd be very interesting if she was a villain yeah it would be very interesting but then it just it, then it would just go on to like oh yeah everyone even on this on prime earth and earth too if you have superpowers you will automatically become evil yeah and it'll be it'll just be interesting to see the actress play a different you know not to play the normal laurel mm-hmm. um, and see her doing something different so yeah i'm excited i'm excited to see that yep so uh, continuing on with TV news, we have that Black Canary will guest star in Vixen Season 2. Um, for you that don't know, uh, CW released, it was a short season, right? Like, very short. Yeah, it was a very short season of animated versions of, um, of a show starring Vixen, mm-hmm. uh, the DC character. And it looks like for Season 2 that we're going to get um, Katie Cassidy. Um, is going to cross over into that season. So is it live action or is it animated? It's all animated. So it's all animated. So she's going to be voicing it, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay. Her her manager is really like doing a good job. Yeah, like, make hey, sure we're in every <laughs> show. Yeah, you're going to be on The Flash, and yeah. now you're going to be on Vixen. Yeah, and you better get that DC Legends of Tomorrow <laughs> contract in here. It's, it's interesting because um, if you watch the episode of Arrow where they finally take down Damien Dark, they call him Vixen. And yep. when Vixen comes to the Arrow Cave, her and Laurel have like a hug, like, oh, hey, good to yep. see you again. So this could be like, hey, why are these two friends? Or it could just be, you know. Hey, here's uh, an episode where they go off and do something. Yeah, which would be kind of yep. cool. Yep. So I, I'm I'm very interested. And I really did like the first season of uh, Vixen, even though it was really, really short. Yep. And I would like to see a, a more live action. I would like to see her more in the live action. But right now, if this is how we're going to see Vixen. Then you'll uh, take it, right? Yeah, I'll take it right now. <laughs> Okay, so uh, TV news, that's that's about it for this week. So let's go ahead and move on to comic news. Um, there are some exciting titles coming out this week that uh, we wanted to take a second to highlight. Uh, first off, uh, Poe Dameron number one. Yeah. So all you guys out there that were like, hey, Force Awakens, you didn't give me enough Poe Dameron? Well, yeah. now you're going to get it in a comic book. Yep, where so. Star Wars is continuing to... Expand put, the universe. You and know? put every single character <laughs> into yeah, a comic well, I mean, book. The, I mean, comic books, we've had this conversation before. They're in a point where they need sales and Star Wars oh, sales. Yeah. So um, it sounds like it's probably an interesting title. It'll, um, I believe it's going to give you some backstory mm-hmm. um, on the character. And, you know, obviously, usually with these kind of uh, Star Wars comics, they always try to, you know, kind of give you like something that you didn't know about the character and um, or somehow tie it more into the universe so we'll see what comes out of it yeah, and i really like poe dameron in the movie so i i'm max also pretty excited to see like where this is going to take place yeah and uh another one coming out from marvel is uh spider-man number three yes. so for you those of you that have been keeping up with the miles morales saga in the new <laughs> in his new title um this will be the third installment of that book and, um, you know, we, we're a big fan of the character oh, yeah. and we're a big fan of, um, you know, continuing that story. So if you, uh, you know, if you're a big Spider-Man guy, make sure to check that one out. Yeah. Where Miles takes on his greatest opponent, his grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm currently reading and I'm enjoying yeah. all of it. Yeah. So the, uh, we also have, uh, the continuation of the old man Logan story. Um, for those of you that are keeping up with the next Wolverine movie that is potentially an o- old man Logan story. Oh you, yeah. You may want to keep up with this title just to kind of keep yourself in the, in the thought process. We're not saying it's tied in, but just to kind of keep you in the world and make you, um, you know, aware of what's going on with Wolverine at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other ginormous title that came out from Marvel this week, and neither one of us have checked this out yet, but we're sure going to it's black Panther. Number one, um, kind of the, 
you know, the tie-in to Civil War and the tie-in to the Black Panther movie that is on the way. Marvel is putting a title on the shelf, you know, featuring the character. Um, yeah, it's interesting because Black Panther. This apparently this book has carries a lot more than just a superhero story because it's written by uh, a civil rights uh, journalist. I can't, I can't remember his name, but apparently, so apparently, it just it hits a lot of very important topics. So I'm very excited to uh, see where the story goes. Yeah, it's. Um you know, it's always cool when they, you know, do this tactic of let's create a title, you know, a number one. Yeah. But I, I think this one, um, you know, obviously without reading it yet, I think this one's exciting enough to definitely check out and, um, you know, learn more about the character because we, this is a character that not a lot of people know a lot about. Mm-hmm. So it was really good for them to drop this in line with the movie. Yeah. So, um, you know, Continuing on, though, in the the comic book world, we uh, jump over to DC for a minute. Uh, The Batman Beyond series is continuing with number 11, um, Green Lantern 51, Green Arrow 51, and Batgirl 50. So these are, uh, you know, we're getting closer to this DC rebirth. So um, a lot of these titles, I don't know that Batman Beyond is tied up in this, but the Green Arrow, Green Lantern, and Batgirl are tied up in this rebirth. So, you know, there's probably some very interesting items getting ready to happen in those titles. So if you, um, you know, if you're getting ready to, transition to this rebirth you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping up with all the dc uh worlds and then comic news graphic novel book news mm-hmm. uh-huh we've got wonder woman earth one yes. is releasing so uh there's a ton of awesome titles to go check out obviously this week yeah um, at your local comic book store or if you you know if you're a fan of comicology or marvel uh whatever that thing's called these days not yeah, Marvel yeah. now anymore, right? It's Marvel something else. Yeah, Marvel, Marvel something else. Yeah, so if you're a big, if you're a comic reader, there's definitely a lot of stuff to check out though so for this week. So make sure to head over to your favorite place and check it out. Yep. Um, finally, our favorite, well, mine and Anthony's favorite portion <laughs> of the of the story. I don't know if the casual movie fan. He, I mean, obviously, movies should be his favorite, but um, our favorite news of the week is always toy news. So uh, the first big item of the week is that. Um, you know, announced back at Toy Fair in uh, uh, January, February time frame, they showed off the pop figures for the Ghostbuster reboot that's coming out this summer that everybody is so excited to see. Oh, yeah. So excited. Um, I would imagine the toy collectors are more excited than people trying to see the movie based on the fact that in the trailer, and this is my own personal beef, they treated it as if it is a reboot or they treated it as if it is a continuation in the trailer, although it is a reboot. Yeah. Why do you acknowledge the past? when you're trying to reboot the past. I don't know. But anyway, on to the toy news. On to the toy. I'm just standing on my soapbox, and I am not hating on it because there are girls. So do not write in the comments that Travis doesn't like girls as Ghostbusters. I actually <laughs> think it's very interesting. I just think it could have been done better. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, basically, the series consists of Patty Nolan, Abby Yates, uh, Aaron Gilbert, Jill Holtzman, Kevin the Receptionist, Gertrude's Ghost, and Rowan's Ghost. These pop figures will be hitting uh, stores in June in preparation for the July 15 uh, launch date for the movie. Um, you know, these these figures, I saw the, uh, the um, turnarounds for them, and I believe I even saw some, um, you know, early shots of the figures. And the sculpts, they look pretty good on these. I mean, they did, they did a pretty good job translating the characters and the, um, you know, the actresses, you know, as well as Pop Can. And, um, you know, hopefully this... Hopefully the movie is a success and hopefully, you know, they can continue on with Ghostbusters themed items because I know a lot of people have been, you know, a lot of people love that, that whole mythology. So it'd be yeah. very interesting to see um, what happens with this movie and what happens with that franchise going forward. Um, another item that we have in toy news this week is that the Marvel legends uh, series that is tied to the um, Captain America civil war have been uh, put up for pre-order over on Big Bad Toy Store. Um, the series will include um, Red Guardian, Nick Fury, a Civil War version of Iron Man, uh, the Mark 46 suit, a Black Panther that includes a masked and unmasked head, by the way, um, and Marvel's Nuke, and a Captain America from the Captain America Civil War um, in the costume you know, for that movie. Um, the big, big news that is tied to this is that the build a figure that is included with this is actually a six, uh, the, the giant, giant man. So it should be, you know, in the six inch scale version of giant man. So it should be relatively large. Yeah. I have not seen one put together yet, but based on the, 
um, photos that I've seen of um, Nuke standing with the torso alone. Um, we're talking a pretty big figure because the legs are probably five inches, you know, based on if, if the photos I've seen are to scale, the legs are probably like five inches tall and the, and the torso itself is probably another four to five inches. So, uh, this giant man is going to be giant (laughs) to say the least. That's really cool. I, I do love it when, uh, Marvel and also I think DC also did those, uh, the build of figures. figures. There's a lot of companies that are doing that these days. I mean, it's a good way to reward people who are hunting for all the figures. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about big bad toy store is that they actually will allow you to pre-order cases of figures. Oh wow. So instead of having to go to the store and hunt, you could just buy them all. Um, you know, does take away the thrill of the hunt. But if you're trying to do something like these build a figures, definitely a good way to pick them up is over on big bad toy store.com. And uh, this one is currently going for all six figures. Plus the build a figure is one forty four ninety nine, So 145 bucks for six action, seven action figures, basically um, at 20 bucks a piece. Um, these figures, that's not that bad of a premium, you know, to pay a little bit extra to get actually it's not even 20, 40, 60, 80 one. That's it. Yeah, 120. So it's a little bit of a premium, but you know, to not have to go and hunt when you're trying to get that build a figure. Yeah. I mean, I think it's well worth it. Um, so as far as news is concerned this week though, that's kind of it. We don't really have a whole lot here and you know, we will raise a glass here for old Anthony who couldn't be here with us, but, um, you know, as always, if you want to continue the conversation, always, you know, if you can leave us a comment down below, tell us what you thought, and you liked it, you didn't like it, um, whatever with that, you know, liking and subscribing on our YouTube channel really helps us out as well. So if you want to go ahead and do that, um, follow us on social media where we're constantly updating with um, any kind of weekly news that we catch in between or heck, just even pictures of stuff that we bought. So um, if you want to go over and check out our Twitter and Instagram token or at token underscore nerd, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, and also, if you happen to be listen, if you happen to be watching this on iTunes, but you would, or on YouTube, and would prefer to listen to us on iTunes, we are there as well. Uh, just go on iTunes and search for Token Nerd, and you can subscribe there to make sure that you get our latest podcast updates. Um, and if you happen to be on Podbean, that is now where we are hosted for our uh, podcasts. Um, so if you want to go over there, you can also check out our episodes on Podbean, Podbean.com. I believe it is slash Token Nerd. Um, or you can just search token nerd on Podbean, and, um, you will definitely find us all over the place these days. We're, you know, we're trying to get out there, trying to get a bigger following. Um, but if you really don't like what we're doing, (laughs) or if you just really want to tell us how good a job we're doing, we also are still waiting on a fan mail. Yeah. still waiting. (laughs) We're 12 episodes deep and still no fan mail. So if you want to go ahead, uh, if you want to send us a fan mail, go ahead and send it over to token nerd podcast at gmail.com. And we might read it on a future episode. Um, as always, we've got the casual movie fan here. Uh, if you want to check out him on, uh, Instagram or Twitter. Yep. All at, at casual movie fan. Also check out my website, casual movie fan.com. And he's doing all kinds of awesome reviews for movies that you may have seen or may have not. And I may or may not have a project coming up with token nerd here in the near future. Yeah. So always make sure to check out our friend, the casual movie fan. So, um, I guess that's it. Let's wrap this one up. I all mean, right. number 12, number 12 is in the vault. Yep. Let's, uh, you know, um, close it up. Yeah. So as always, I'm Travis and I'm Madison. Stay spicy, my friend. <laughs>